Greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility located outside of Delmont, Pennsylvania. It's a unique facility, is it not, Mr. Faisal? Yeah, it's a very unique facility. This is where we treat uh, people, not necessarily diagnosis. Would that be correct? Yeah. Sure. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... I am Faisal. I'm a medical extern here. And on my right? Uh, my name is Caroline, and I'm a physician assistant student. Sure. So, uh, this title of this segment is Dancing with Yourself. It's where we attempt to incorporate something in your life that you can actually something to use to map to make it just a little bit brighter to help you live your life out loud rather than just tell you to uh, take vitamin C because it's good for you. Uh, have you ever been to a dance facial? Um, yeah. You've been to a dance before? Okay. Okay. Could you, what, so we're going to dance a little bit. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a dance partner? <laughs> yeah. So it would, could, uh, have you ever been to a dance? Have you ever been turned down? Yeah. To go to a dance? Yeah. Have you ever been at a dance and asked somebody to dance and you and they turned you down? Yeah, many times. <laughs> how, how did that make you feel? Yeah, um, upset, very upset. Sure. Caroline? Yeah. yeah, upset. I was also sad. So, who do we always have a choice to dance with and who will not refuse us and who could possibly be our perfect dance partner? Themselves. Themselves, certainly, certainly. Yeah, certainly. Right, right. So, uh, Caroline, when we talk about a dance, and our friends can uh, relax just for a moment. Uh, so when we talk about a dance, what are we, what are we, what are we saying? Um, so dances have many different genres, different steps, um, different music, some free form, and some very structured. Almost like a life, isn't it? So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to take a step away from uh, traditional mindfulness today, Faisal. And what we're going to discuss is we're going to discuss mind dancing today, mind dancing and purposeful fantasy and daydreaming. Uh, perhaps you're acquainted with uh, the old psychologist, uh, Jerome Singer. Yeah. <laughs> 1975, he published uh, The Inner World of Daydreaming. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. And what he talked about was a bunch of, uh, a whole lot of uh, different type of dance steps and daydreaming. So, and when we, when we talk about that, what we talk about is, um, is, uh, I guess, is... Sometimes, very... sometimes we talk about daydreaming that isn't so beneficial. Sometimes we dance in our heads and there isn't a beneficial purpose to that, is there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's called um, guilty dysphoric uh, dreaming, and in that, the person actually fantasizes himself as uh, living in the failure, he is obsessive and compulsive about failing every time and doing bad things to himself and um, dealing with trauma, reliving the trauma himself and uh, these kind of people have uh, difficulty concentrating. What type of a dance is that? Now that's surely a bad dance. Right. And what type of music are we playing in our head to those type of dances, Faisal? It's, it's, a, it's a bad kind of... Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. And remember when we're, that's not a very good dance partner. Yeah. And when we're having up in our head doorway. On the other hand, uh, what we are going to introduce today is a concept called? Um, called positive constructive daydreaming, which is one where you weren't, that you weren't stepping on your own toes, you weren't fighting with yourself, um, which you can drive the creativity and imagination that's inside you. Sure. So how can we do that? What, what type of, what, what, how, can, how can we do that? Um, we can uh, go back to our lucid daydreaming. We can, we can go back to our lucid daydreaming, okay? So what, what, what we're talking about is joyous daydreaming. What we're talking about is eliciting vivid imagery in your mind for scenarios, developing, framing curiosity. Remember, your mind is one of the greatest treasures that you have, and perhaps the gift of free choice is, is the greatest and most final gift that we do have. Remember, everything in your life's a choice. Every, the, the music that you put in your head, the, the dance steps that you're doing is your choice. It's your, what, 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 sometimes what happens, Caroline, is that we, have you ever said, so-and-so made me so angry? Oh, yeah. Have you ever said, if so-and-so wouldn't have done that, I, I wouldn't be in this situation today. Yeah. I wouldn't be angry. Can anyone make you angry? Yeah. Can anyone make you angry? No. <laughs> no. Help me explain that to me. You have the choice of getting angry or not. 
Can anyone get inside of your head, perform brain surgery on you, and get inside and turn that particular Andrew screw inside your head? No. No. You allow it to happen, do you not? Yeah. Just, yeah. just the same as you, uh, you can permit yourself, give yourself permission to have a better dance. Can you turn the uh, dial on a radio station? Yeah. If you yeah. don't like the music? Yeah. If you don't care for the music, can you change the channel? Yeah. So what's stopping you from changing the channel, Miss Caroline? Um, your own, your own feelings on it. Sure. So what I'm this is uh, I'm challenging everyone out there. If you're listening to a radio station inside your head that isn't particularly pleasing to you or calming, uh, that's getting your nerves on edge, do you have the capability of changing the channel? So how does one change the channel? How how would how would one change a channel inside their head? Right? So, um, the I guess the first part is to be. Uh, be uh, aware of that, that he does not like it, and uh, uh, then to get up and change it. Indeed, the first part would be to recognize that this is a particular station that I do not want to listen to. Do you, do you have a desire to have, uh, be angry? Do you have a desire to participate in those emotions that are harmful to you? No. No. So the idea is that it's easy to blame them on others, isn't it? Yeah. When actually you're the only one who has you're the one who has the remote control in your hand. You're the one out there. No one else. The only power that any per person, place, thing, or situation has over you is the power that you give to yourself. Yeah. You give it. You give that power away. How much power have you given away in your life? More than I wish I had. <laughs> sure. So remember the wishes and hopes. We're not going to go there. It's choices. Making conscious choices. Okay, yeah. so the idea is that I know that you two are in a particularly rigorous uh, educational um, background. So tell us, tell us a little bit about the, your studying and your life and your careers to become a medical doctor. Well, there have been months and uh, and days when I'm only studying, 16, 17, 18 hours, and when I'm sleeping, I cannot sleep because I am worried about study. So. It's been like that for many, many years, and it's stressful. Sure it is. Could you share with us a little bit, Caroline, particularly about these laminated notes? That, that's always fascinating. <laughs> yeah, so um, we would write our notes out or print our notes out, um, have them laminated, and then um, put them up on the wall of the shower so that even when you were taking a shower, uh, you could, could read your notes and study at any time. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you disengage from that? How do you how do you disengage? How do you untangle yourself from getting trapped? If you have you ever read over instructions over and over and over and over again, some technical instructions, and really, and you get to the point where your eyes become blurred, and it no longer becomes yeah. meaningful. Yeah, a lot of times. And uh, tell me about that. It's not the more you read about them, the more confused you get, and the more stress you get. Have you been there, Caroline? I have. So wouldn't it be nice to get up and dance? Not literally get up and dance, but what, yeah. so would it be nice to, but it would be nice to disengage, would it be nice to have some freeform type of mental gymnastics? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I would love that. So could you share with uh, everyone out there perhaps a, a little tidbit, a little something that works in your life? Well, I, sometimes I literally dance to get uh, help from the stress and sometimes I take shower and the process is just to disengage yourself from whatever you are doing repetitively. Caroline? Um, I engage myself by exercise. Um, listen to music and take a step away from what I was studying. Working mm -hmm. on. I'm challenging you to use that magnificent thinker inside your head. Remember at times our thinker is like a really, really wonderful, helpful neighbor that wants to come over and help you mow your lawn, however, it runs over your flower bed, okay? So the idea is that we have to outsmart this thing. And then when we're talking about the thinker, when we say that I can't stand myself or I can't live with myself, I don't like the way that I am feeling, means that there's, there's two of you. So what we want to do is become this observer behind this thinker. It's the observer that can change the channel. It's the observer that can refocus that camera inside your head. It's the, it's the observer that can get up and dance inside of your head, get up and move just a little bit, to disengage, to jump on those monkey bars, to fly around inside of your head, have some positive, constructive daydreaming, even for a few minutes. 
Think, try to think of the best thing that's happened to you this last week. If you can just sit back and close your eyes and think of the best thing that's happened to you this last week. Faisal, what's the best thing that's happened to you this past week? Yeah, I, there are a lot of things. Yeah. I ate guacamole for the first time. <laughs> eat guacamole for the first time. I'm glad, I'm glad you had that experience. Yeah. So that's, that's a little dance we can do inside your head, yeah. right? So how, how was the guacamole, by the way? It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes when we're when we're our own chef inside of our head, when we're serving up the food, sometimes we serve ourselves up food that's unpalatable, and we can get mental indigestion. Can we yeah. not? Yeah. You're not. So tell me the best thing that's happened to you, Miss Caroline. Um, I moved to a new apartment that has air conditioning. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> that 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 that's tremendous. <laughs> so what I'm out there, I'm challenging everyone out there is to be your own tour guide, to be your own activity director, and to be your own personal chef. Let's, let's try to avoid the mental indigestion. If you're, if you're anxiety intolerant, then I would suggest you not add anxiety to that particular dish that you're serving yourself this evening. Remember that you can always, if not, if not literally, can figuratively get up and dance inside your head. And however, that's a choice. My, my question to everyone out there, my challenge to you right now, what radio station are you listening to at the moment? There are many out there, and if you don't know of any, come to Seclair and we can help you tune in and channel. So, until then, we always write a free prescription at the end of every podcast, do we not? We do. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables, and unplug your television, and perhaps take up fishing. Yeah. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask that you fish without bait, where you live a lifetime without definitive expectations on yourself. Until then, be good to yourself, be good to another, namaste. Namaste.